Hello everyone, now this is the second part of the chemistry revision video. Now here we are just going to understand from the physical state how to indicate the physical state of a chemical reaction. Now there should be a question in your mind that I have not started the balancing part. Now as you know the balancing part that in a chemical reaction the reactant side and the product side we have to make equal. So whenever I will solve the NCRT questions they are whatever the questions are given about balancing I will just make you solve okay. Now here we have to understand the, uh, how to indicate the physical state of reactants and the products because whenever you are just writing down a chemical reaction you have to make the chemical reaction more informative thus watching the chemical reaction I am able to uh, I am just able to understand that what is going on in this chemical reaction. Suppose there I have a reaction that hydrogen is reacting with oxygen and we it is forming the water. But I don't know the physical state of hydrogen, the physical state of oxygen and in which state I am getting the water molecule. So I have to indicate the physical state, I have to indicate that whether there is any heat is getting changed or not or is there any some special conditions is there. That means some catalyst whether it is involved here or not. So the first reaction we have taken for consideration that we have to indicate the physical state that is hydrogen which is in the state of gas it is reacting with oxygen which is also in the state of gas whenever they are just reacting with each other we are getting the water molecule which is in liquid form. So the solid state is defined by small s in a first bracket liquid state is defined by small l in a first bracket aqueous solution that means the diluted HCl, the diluted H2SO4, they are represented by AQ in a first bracket. Gaseous state is represented by small g in a first bracket. So the second example that I have taken that is of carbon is reacting with oxygen. Where carbon is solid in nature, it is reacting with oxygen which is gas and we are able to get the carbon dioxide which is also in the form of gas. So this is a process of combustion you can see and here we have indicated their physical states as well. So physical states are very much important whenever you are writing down a chemical reaction. Now we are proceeding to the famous chemical reaction that is whenever the dilute sulfuric acid is being added with the zinc granules and it is forming the zinc sulfate and some hydrogen gas is being evolved. So in this case zinc granules they are in solid form. The diluted H2SO4, diluted HCl, I have said it always be in aqueous form. You are getting the GnSO4, that is of zinc sulfate. It should be in the aqueous solution. And there is some evolution of hydrogen gas. So here I have indicated all of the physical state in the reactant side as well as in the product side. Now in this chemical reaction, we are just able to see that calcium hydroxide is reacting with carbon dioxide and we are able to get the calcium carbonate which is a white color precipitate and plus some water molecule. In this case calcium hydroxide will always be in aqueous form. It is also known as lime water or slick lime. It is reacting with carbon dioxide which will always be in gas gaseous form. We are able to obtain the calcium carbonate which is a white color precipitate. It is in solid form plus some water molecule which will be in liquid form. Now we are proceeding up that we have to indicate the whether is there any heat is uh, evolved or we have to supply any heat for a chemical reaction to occur or not. So as you can see that in the reactant side there are some substances who are just reacting with each other and we are able to obtain some product. So here the carbon is reacting with oxygen and we are able to get the carbon dioxide plus some heat energy. So obviously you can see whenever any substances is being burned in presence of oxygen obviously you will get some heat energy. So whenever heat is getting evolved that kind of reaction is known as exothermic reaction. In the second reaction you are able to see that calcium oxide is reacting with water molecule and we are able to get the calcium hydroxide plus some heat energy. So whenever in any chemical reaction whenever the reactants have reacted with each other after the chemical reaction you are able to obtain some heat energy it should be written in the product side and that kind of chemical reaction is exothermic in nature okay 
now as you can see here that the methane gas have reacted with oxygen and we are able to get the carbon dioxide the water molecule and some heat energy so in this case we are able to get some heat after the chemical reaction so that's why we have represented it in the product side that kind of chemical reaction is exothermic reaction now in the last reaction whenever the glucose is reacting with oxygen that means the glucose is burned in presence of oxygen we are able to get carbon dioxide water plus some energy in this case what type of energy you are able to obtain that is also the heat energy so that's why this is an exothermic reaction exothermic reaction can also be considered whenever after the reaction you are able to get some energy that may be a heat energy or that may be other energy also that may be the mechanical energy or the chemical energy you are able to obtain that means whenever you are just uh, eating some food that food is finally converted to glucose that glucose is burned in presence of oxygen that's why we are able to get the energy with that energy we are able to do some work so that's why this chemical reaction is exothermic because we are able to obtain the energy after the reaction we don't have to supply any heat energy for this chemical reaction to occur we are obtaining the heat energy so that's why it is exothermic okay don't get confused in exo and endo okay now in the above reaction also methane is getting burnt in presence of oxygen every combustion reaction is exothermic in nature now nitrogen here the nitrogen which is present in air that reacts with oxygen whenever you will supply some heat energy so the nitrogen is reacting with oxygen in presence of some heat energy and it is um, it is formed into nitrogen monoxide or nitric oxide so in this chemical reaction you are supplying the heat energy for this chemical reaction to occur so this kind of chemical reaction is endothermic reaction in the second reaction you can say that the calcium carbonate is being heated and we are able to get the calcium oxide and carbon dioxide in this case i have to supply the heat energy for this chemical reaction to occur so the second reaction i can say it is a decomposition reaction right that the in the calcium carbonate i am applying some heat and i am obtaining the calcium oxide and carbon dioxide right now there are some specific condition that some special substances are involved in a chemical reaction as the chemical reaction can occur smoothly uh, so that kind of substances are known as catalyst catalyst are those substances who are present in a chemical reaction and it helps the chemical reaction to occur okay in the first reaction you are able to see that uh, the manganese dioxide mno2 is present in this chemical reaction the catalyst have some special property the catalyst will participate in the chemical reaction but after the reaction it will not be changed into any other form it will remain same throughout the reaction okay now it also uh, do another thing it uh, increases the rate of reaction suppose initially the reaction was slow after participation of the catalyst the reaction is uh, the rate of reaction getting increased okay so potassium chloride whenever the potassium chloride will be heated in presence of manganese dioxide it will produce the potassium chloride and some oxygen gas so in this case manganese dioxide is the catalyst involved here okay and this kind of chemical reaction is decomposition the first reaction is decomposition second reaction carbon monoxide is reacting with hydrogen and some atmospheric pressure uh, some atmospheric pressure some specific temperature and some catalyst is all conditions are necessary for this chemical reaction to occur so here we are using 300 atmospheric pressure 300 degree centigrade temperature a uh, catalyst of mixture of zinc oxide and chromium trioxide after this chemical reaction we are obtaining methanol or methyl alcohol okay methyl alcohol or methanol always in liquid form the third and the most important chemical reaction 
that the carbon dioxide is reacting with water in presence of sunlight and at the chlorophyll we are able to get the glucose and some oxygen this is the photosynthesis reaction where in the leaves of the plants there is a region of chlorophyll where this chemical reactions occur now there are the some types of chemical reaction combination decomposition displacement double displacement and oxidation reduction combination combination means what obviously two substances will combine with each other and they will form a new substance same thing happens here there are two substances are combining with each other and they are forming some new substance okay so in the first reaction the most famous reaction i have taken an example as magnesium is burnt in presence of oxygen and we are able to get the magnesium oxide so we can say that in this chemical reaction it is also known as a combustion it can also be said as a combination because magnesium is combining with oxygen and we are getting the magnesium oxide second one that the hydrogen is reacting with oxygen and we are getting the water molecule so hydrogen is combining with oxygen so we are obtaining the water molecule remember every combustion reaction is a combination reaction even every combustion reaction is an oxidation re reaction last one that the sodium is reacting with chlorine and we are able to obtain the sodium chloride because sodium is combined with chlorine and sodium chloride is formed next example more three examples we have that the iron is uh, recombining with sulfur and we are able to get the iron sulfide actually the iron and sulfur after adding them together we have to apply some heat so that's why we are able to obtain the iron sulfide in the second reaction calcium oxide is reacting with water that means the quick lime is reacting with water and it is forming the flake lime plus lot of heat energy this is the most famous chemical reaction that i have discussed several times in this case calcium oxide is combining with water and we are able to obtain the calcium hydroxide in the last reaction ammonia is reacting with hydrogen chloride and we are able to get ammonium chloride okay ammonium chloride is a one type of substance whenever you will heat the ammonium chloride it will be directly converted to gas this is the process of sublimation remember you have uh, studied in class 9 so here you can see that the ammonia is reacting with hydrogen chloride or ammonia is combining with hydrogen chloride so we are able to obtain the ammonium chloride here now decomposition what do you mean by decomposition so obviously it will be given a substance it will decompose into other substances so here the calcium carbonate whenever you will heat the calcium carbonate obviously it will be broken in calcium oxide and carbon dioxide the calcium carbonate is a white color powder it's actually known as a limestone as well now in the second reaction potassium chlorate whenever you will heat the potassium chlorate it will be decomposed into potassium chloride and oxygen what is similar in these two chemical reaction so you are given one substance suppose calcium carbonate or potassium chlorate whenever you are heating them whenever you are supplying the heat energy you are obtaining calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so in this chemical reaction we can say that this is a endothermic chemical reaction because i have to supply the heat energy for this chemical reaction to occur in the third case also that ferrous sulfate which is green in color whenever it is heated we are obtaining the ferric oxide ferric oxide is always in brown color and some sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide we are able to obtain here okay now uh, decomposition reaction will again discuss whenever there is some presence of sunlight okay and uh, there is some presence of uh, there is there uh, will do the electrolysis of some substances for the decomposition reaction that is discussed in some separate video you can uh, watch that video that is already available in our channel i'm not uh, going to repeat that portion again okay displacement what is displacement that one uh, whenever two substances are participating in a chemical reaction some part of the substance will be 
displaced by other substance as you can see here copper sulfate is reacting with zinc and we are able to obtain the zinc sulfate how it is happened and why it is happened because in this case zinc is more stable than copper so the copper is substituted by the zinc as you can see here the copper is substituted by the zinc so that's why you are able to obtain the zinc sulfate plus some copper in the second reaction the magnesium is more stable than copper so the magnesium is substituting the copper here we are able to obtain the magnesium sulfate and copper in the third reaction iron is also more stable than copper so iron is replacing the copper or iron is displacing the copper from copper sulfate so that's why you are able to obtain the iron sulfate or you can say it is a ferrous sulfate and some copper as well so in all of these chemical reaction what is common in the first reaction zinc is displacing the copper in the second reaction magnesium is displacing the copper in the third reaction iron is displacing the copper so they are known as displacement reaction now more for examples we have in the first reaction you can see that copper chloride is reacting with lead so whenever the lead will react with the copper chloride lead is more stable than copper so lead will displace the copper from copper chloride and it will form the lead chloride some and some copper obviously in the second reaction the copper is more stable than silver so copper is uh, displacing the silver we are able to obtain the copper nitrate plus some silver here you don't have to remember all this chemical reaction just remember their color actually in uh, cbsc at uh, in section d i think they will ask that type of question which involves the color so you have to remember the color of each and every substance whichever you are learning now so in this chemical reaction chlorine is reacting with potassium iodide and we are able to obtain potassium chloride and some iodine in this case what happened that chlorine is a displacing the iodine here so that's why we are able to obtain the potassium iodide so chlorine is displacing the iodine so whenever you will just see a chemical reaction in this case at first you have to understand that why that the displacement is occurring why that the decomposition is occurring or not why that the combination is happening or not that you have to determine by yourself by watching the chemical reaction okay now whenever you will just write down the chemical reaction you will automatically understand Let's suppose in the third example chlorine is displacing the iodine so i am able to understand that it is forming the potassium chloride because in the place of iodine chlorine has come in this way you have to understand also whenever copper oxide is reacting with magnesium so in this case magnesium is more stable than copper so in this case magnesium is a displacing the copper and we are able to obtain the magnesium oxide and some copper obviously so now the topic is double displacement reaction in this double displacement reaction what happens that there is an exchange of ions to form the new compounds so how the ions are getting exchanged in this case chlorine and nitrate these are the two ions so there is an exchange of ions the chlorine is displaced uh, chlorine is uh, replacing the nitrate ion and the nitrate ion is also replacing the chlorine here so that's why we are able to obtain the silver chloride and sodium nitrate in the second reaction barium chloride is reacting with sodium sulfate so in this case chlorine is the ion or you can say sulfate is the ion so sulfate is replacing the chlorine or the chlorine is replacing the sulfate so in this case we are able to obtain barium sulfate and sodium chloride this reaction can also be explained in a different way remember i have said in the class positive ion can replace the positive ion negative ion can replace the negative ion in the above two examples i have already said about the negative ions only now i will say about positive ions in the third example barium is a positive ion and in this case copper is a positive ion copper is a displacing the barium and the barium is displacing the copper so that's why we are able to obtain the copper chloride and barium sulfate 
as a product here right so here the two compounds which are participating in a chemical reaction they are exchanging their ions to form the new compounds so that's why it is a double displacement reaction now we are just moving to oxidation reduction okay directly oxidation means what oxidation means addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen okay don't get confused in oxidation and reduction just remember the one you will able to remember the other one by reversing the first as i have said oxidation means addition of oxygen so reduction means removing of oxygen first one clear second point oxidation means removal of hydrogen so reduction means addition of hydrogen so in this way you can remember or you can recognize a chemical reaction that why that the oxidation reduction is happening here or not as you can see in the first reaction that initially in the reactant side there was copper oxide but in the product side there is a copper so obviously from copper oxide the oxygen is removed so whenever oxygen is removed it is a reduction process now in the reactant side initially there was hydrogen but in the product side there is water molecule so obviously the hydrogen is oxidized that means the what oxygen molecule is being added with the hydrogen so whenever there is an addition of oxygen so that kind of chemical reaction is oxidation so in this chemical reaction what you understood removal of oxygen is reduction addition of oxygen is oxidation from the copper oxide oxygen is removed so it is reduced to copper from the in the hydrogen the oxygen is added so it is oxidized here now there is an interesting fact that i just want to tell you that who is oxidizing agent who is a reducing agent now in this case which substance is getting oxidized as you can see that hydrogen is getting oxidized but how the hydrogen is getting oxidized because the copper oxide has given him the oxygen so that's why the hydrogen is getting oxidized and it is forming the water molecule so who is giving the oxygen to hydrogen in this chemical reaction here copper oxide is giving its oxygen to the hydrogen molecule so here copper oxide is the oxidizing agent and hydrogen is a reducing agent now you will ask that why sir hydrogen is a reducing agent now from the copper oxide who is removing the oxygen from the copper oxide hydrogen is removing the oxygen so removing of oxygen that means of reduction so here hydrogen is a reducing agent and copper oxide is an oxidizing agent now here the three reaction in the first reaction the hydrogen sulfide is reacting with chlorine we are obtaining the sulfur and hcl in this case as you can see that in the reactant side there was hydrogen sulfide but in the product side we are able to obtain only sulfur so obviously from hydrogen sulfide hydrogen is removed whenever hydrogen is removed it is a process of oxidation so hydrogen sulfide is getting oxidized and we are able to obtain the sulfur only so in this case who is removing the hydrogen from the hydrogen sulfide chlorine is doing that job so here chlorine is the oxidizing agent okay now the second part in the reactant side chlorine was present only but in the product side we are able to obtain the hydrogen chloride so there is an addition of hydrogen with chlorine so chlorine is getting reduced to hydrogen chloride but who is giving the hydrogen to chlorine hydrogen sulfide is giving the hydrogen to chlorine so here hydrogen sulfide is the reducing agent in the third reaction zinc oxide is reacting with carbon we are able to obtain zinc and carbon monoxide so here initially in the reactant side there was zinc oxide but in the product side we are able to obtain the zinc so here the oxygen is removed 
from zinc oxide so this is the process of reduction so zinc oxide is reduced to zinc but who is removing that oxygen obviously carbon is doing the carbon is doing that job or carbon is removing the oxygen from zinc oxide so removing of oxygen is reduction carbon is doing that job so carbon is the reducing agent similarly <coughs> in the reactant side there was only carbon but in the product side we are able to obtain the carbon monoxide so that means there is an addition of oxygen this is the process of oxidation so who is doing that job that means who is donating the oxygen atom to carbon zinc oxide is doing that job zinc oxide is donating his oxygen to carbon so that's why you are able to obtain the carbon monoxide so zinc oxide is oxidizing the carbon so zinc oxide is an oxidizing agent last chemical reaction manganese dioxide is reacting with hydrochloric acid we are obtaining manganese manganese dichloride and some chlorine gas in this case from the hydrochloride uh, from the hydrochloric acid the hydrogen is removed whenever hydrogen is removed and we are able to get the chlorine this is the process of oxidation right so hydrogen hydrochloric acid is oxidized to chlorine who is doing that job MnO2 manganese dioxide is doing that job so manganese dioxide is a oxidizing agent similarly from the manganese dioxide oxygen is removed and we are able to obtain the manganese dichloride so whenever some oxygen molecule is removed from this manganese dioxide so this is a process of reduction and manganese dioxide is reduced to manganese dichloride who is doing that job hydrochloric acid is doing that job hydrochloric acid is uh, removing the oxygen from manganese dioxide so here hydrochloric acid is a reducing agent so at this point of time we are just ending this session i hope you have enjoyed this do you have if you have any of the doubt you can ask me directly